The 3D era of Grand Theft Auto stretches from, appropriately, the first 3D game in the series, GTA 3, back in 2001, all the way to GTA Vice City Stories, originally released for the PSP in 2006, and then re-released on the PS2 in 2007, which is how I played it. A mere five years, arguably seven, if we declare the end of the era to be the beginning of the HD, which started with GTA 4 in 2008. But no matter how you slice it, the 3D era didn't last very long in comparison to the HD, which is now technically 16 years old. However, in that much shorter time period, due to the nature of game development back then, we got a total of five cities to explore across six games, if we include GTA Advance for obligatory reasons, since it is technically part of that era. We have Liberty City, as seen in GTA 3 and later Liberty City Stories. We have Vice City, as seen in, uh, in Vice City and Vice City Stories. And we have Los Santos, San Fierro, and Las Venturas, all seen in GTA San Andreas. In San Andreas, we technically also have a bunch of small towns, but that's not what this video is about, and if we did include them, they would pretty obviously be at the bottom of the list, but you know what? Screw it. Let's go over them as well, since that'll give me precedent for covering the comparatively larger towns present in GTA 5, like Grapeseed and Polito Bay. So, for starters, we've got Blueberry, Angel Pine, Montgomery, Dillamore, Palomino Creek, Bayside, Las Barrancas, Fort Carson, Las Payasadas, and an unnamed town in eastern Bone County. There are a few more, but all of them are abandoned and only either seen in story missions or not at all, simply serving as additional places that the player can explore if they want to. I'm mostly just going to rank these based on size and utility, as well as I guess my own memory. In other words, do you ever have an actual reason to visit these places, starting with the very bottom, Bayside? Bayside is one of the only towns in the game, beyond the literal ghost towns, that just has nothing. Okay, technically it does have the boating school what i learned in boating school is but other than that there are no buildings that can be entered no safe houses that can be purchased no hidden girlfriends or even fast food joints you also never have to come to bayside for any missions in the game not main missions anyway and it's entirely possible easy even to never visit the town throughout a normal playthrough since it is very likely that your initial visit to Bone County will be via the Garver Bridge, since it's so close to Torino's Ranch, where your first missions after Fierro are. Next up will be the only completely unnamed town in eastern Bone County. Despite being smaller than Bayside, and literally not having a name, it does have an ammunition that you might occasionally visit, so for that reason alone, it wins but it doesn't really have anything else worth mentioning. Next is Las Payasadas. I'm probably not saying that right. Any Spanish-speaking viewers, go ahead and crucify me in the comments. And while the town doesn't have any usable businesses or much of anything worth mentioning, it does have the world's largest cock, which I feel like perfectly encapsulates Rockstar's humor from this era. And still, to this day, if we're being honest, this landmark is amusing, and it managed to beat out the unnamed town simply for the fact that I realized recently it also has a Simpsons reference on it. A reference I never would have picked up on until very recently when watching a magnificent video from Alexander Avila, but I digress. It's a really big rooster. What more do you need? Not much. Not much. Next up is Las Barrancas a tiny little town which does not have an ammunition or any other noteworthy enterable businesses, but it does have a giant inflatable cow on top of one of the buildings. And you know, an actual name, so that's something. Technically. 
It also has a appropriately culturally insensitive TP motel, which always reminded me of the movie Cars and the little traffic cone motel. So for nostalgia's sake, it gets like one singular bonus point for that, allowing it to beat the unnamed town and Las Payasadas. Now that might sound like a really dumb criteria, but uh, moving on to El Cuebrados. Cueb Cuebrados? El Cuebrados, which has both a pay and spray and a barber shop that is for some reason not actually shown on the map. But also, getting real fancy here, it has its own police department and a purchasable safe house. This is the first of the towns I've listed that I distinctly remember spending some time in, since the girlfriend who lives here, Barbara, is how you unlock the police outfit, which I always used to get and then roleplay as I did vigilante missions. So definitely the most memorable so far for me. Last up for Bone County is the county seat, apparently, Fort Carson, which is also the biggest of the towns in the northern part of the state near Venturas. Fort Carson has a player home, a pay and spray, a cluck and bell, and an ammunition. They even have a pseudo Vinewood sign of the town's name. Now, while never visited for any reasons in any of the missions in the game, to my memory anyway, it is seen in a cutscene from the, by this point, apparently obscure introduction, a 20 minute cutscene movie that's 100% canon and was originally an exclusive add-on to the PC version upon release. Sadly, I cannot show you that cutscene since, for some strange reason, it will always get automatically copyright claimed since I guess Rockstar is particularly invested in keeping anyone from the modern era from seeing it. I lost count of the number of times I went to use scenes from it in videos and had to re-edit them because of this. Actually, that annoyed me so much that I'm tempted to put Fort Carson at the bottom of the list out of spite, but eh, it's too late now. It wins for being technically the biggest and most useful. But I never spent nearly as much time in Bone County as Red or Flint counties or Whetstone, so they sadly all stack up the bottom of the list. Especially because all of the towns near Los Santos and Fierro have at least one mission which takes you to them, those being the Catalina Robbery missions, in addition to their few shops and player homes. So first up, we have Montgomery. Now Montgomery isn't the smallest or the biggest, it's kinda right in the middle, but I feel like I almost never come here other than for that one mission which features it, the betting shop robbery. I guess if you're really into the betting minigame and happen to be in Red County, you might stop in, but you can visit the pizza place, which is, again, oddly not shown on the map. Next up is Palomino Creek. With this place, much like Montgomery, it feels like there's very little reason to ever come out here, even if it does have an ammunition and a pizza place. What it does have, though, is easily the most memorable of the Catalina robbery missions, the bank job. So you end up spending a bit of time in the back alleys and seeing the interior of the town's local police station, as well as the bank itself. Wait, no, it's not the police station. It's like a coffee shop, whatever. You know, I'm not actually sure why I almost never come to this town. Maybe just because it's all the way on the eastern side of the map and there aren't a ton of missions that come out here, but yeah, looking at it objectively, it has plenty going on. As far as the small towns go anyway, it just doesn't stick in my memory as much as the other ones for whatever reason. Then we have Dillamore, which is I think the smallest of the Red County towns and is just outside of the Los Santos city limits. It has a player home and a pay and spray, but that's basically it. However, it does have a gas station which you rob with Catalina and therefore two separate interiors that we get to see inside of. The other being the inside of a steakhouse where you first meet Catalina before actually starting your robbery spree. Side note, does anybody not do this one first? Because I quite literally always do. I mean, right after you meet her, it's the closest and it's the farthest away, I think, from Catalina's hideout and all the other robbery missions. So it feels like it was designed to be the first place you rob, but 
I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I also like the exterior of the safe house in Dillamore. It reminds me of small towns just outside of my city, although Los Santos, and for that matter Los Angeles, is quite a bit bigger, so I imagine whatever small town it is based off is probably also quite a bit bigger than what we get. But to be fair, given the game's scale, we rarely get more than a few roads and businesses for these small town USA locations. Alright, and next, the runner-up for best town is Blueberry. Now, this place is really only seen during the Catalina Liquor Store robbery in terms of missions, but the big-ass factory in town and the farm are really memorable landmarks for me personally. The factory sticks out to me because you do have to deliver something here during one of the trucker missions, and it's just freaking big and hard to miss. But the farm, and parts of the town too, are seen during the woozy racing missions, which I think is probably why the town sticks in my memory as much as it does, seeing as you have to do that race twice. There's a pizza place and an ammunition too, and it's probably the gun store in the sticks that I use the most, if I ever do, but the safe house is just another apartment, and I tend to avoid those when I play San Andreas, because they're just boring. I mean, I have an apartment, you know, and I play games to forget about my real life, not be reminded of it. Oh, and there's another girlfriend you can meet here, Helena, though I don't know if I've ever actually gone on a date with her, because all she gives you as her bonus is some weapons, which, while good, aren't nearly as good as the whole keeping your weapons when you die or get arrested that Katie and Barbara give you. And finally, Angel Pine, the only town in Whetstone County, or is it just Whetstone? I don't know. Point is, this town is featured quite prominently in the story, being the location that Tenpenny dumps you after finishing the initial Los Santos chapter of the game. You get to see inside one of the trailers, that's presumably your safe house during a cutscene, but you never actually get to enter it without mods. But you also get to see inside the town's motel when meeting the truth for the first time. The town is also featured, once again, in a mission when later tracking down information about the Loco Syndicate with Caesar. In fact, the game dumps you there once again since Caesar doesn't have the common courtesy to drive you home. Douche. Oh, and it's seen again, technically, when doing the mission NOE because you have to fly through a corona above the town to apparently drop supplies, I think, to some CIA agents working for or with Mike Torino. This place does have a player home, but since most player homes reuse a handful of interiors, it's the exterior that matters here, and it is kind of boring. Oh, and the town also has an ammunition and a clucking bell, which is featured in that Loco Syndicate mission. Now that I think about it, this is definitely the most spotlighted of all the small towns in the game, and I'm not really sure why. Honestly, kind of lazy. It all makes sense though, I suppose, being the closest small town to San Fierro, and therefore a convenient location to meet for the predominantly San Fierro-based syndicate, NOE just wants the player to fly a very long distance, but they could have had either of these missions send you to other towns, and it would have made just as much sense too. The one that makes the most sense, and I wouldn't change, is Tenpenny dropping you off here, since it's a good distance away from Los Santos, but not too far from San Fierro, and it really makes you feel like you've entered completely new territory. Anyway, mostly because of its prominent place in the story, Angel Pine wins as the most memorable and best overall small town in San Andreas. Not too shocking, but now it's time for what you all came here for, the cities. Alright, here we go, the main course. As I said, there are a total of five major cities across the 3D era, three of which are exclusively in San Andreas, but the other two also have the added bonus of being in two different games, giving more of a glimpse at their histories and just giving players a bit more time in general to spend roaming around. Those being Vice City and Liberty Cities, of course. But I hear you ask, what do I consider the worst city in the series? Keeping in mind that there are only five, and even the lowest rated ones I still enjoy immensely, but today is all about 
arbitrarily pitting them against one another to win my approval, like Joaquin Phoenix and Gladiator. So it had to be one of them. This video and all videos on my channel are brought to you in large part by the wonderful support of my patrons on Patreon.com. An extra special thank you to my executive producer and Walkerville tier patrons, Ezra Hambrick, Mason Collin, Chuck K45, King GTA 15, Die Castinator, and Michael Vandenberg. Patrons at these tiers also have the option to promote a little bit of their own content, so this video is also brought to you in part by Ezra's Let's Play channel, Scott Games 99, Mason Collins' podcast channel, We're About Everything, Chuck K45's Upstart Farming channel, and Diecastinator's channel, All About Diecast Cars. I release all videos a little early for patrons and completely uncensored and give you access to any of the original music tracks created for a given video. You'll also get to see your name in the credits of all videos produced while you're pledged, get access to a small patron-only Discord where you can easily speak with me, or see little behind-the-scenes snippets. And you'll also receive my eternal gratitude. Seriously, especially these days, those of you who support my work directly are absolutely incredible and I can't properly express how grateful I am to all of you. Patreon.com forward slash The Criminal Historian. Thank you so much for watching. And that one happens to be Las Venturas, baby. Now, ironically, of all the real cities each of these are based on, Venturas, obviously based on Vegas, is perhaps the one I have the most interest in. I mean, Vegas is, not actually Venturas, hence its placement, but in the actual game, Venturas ends up feeling overall like it was the most rushed, and I've always felt that in general, it was severely underutilized and explored. I mean, you can still explore it, obviously, but the actual game's missions don't take you to much of the sprawling jewel of the desert. You spend most of your time, or a pretty significant chunk of your time, on and around the Venturas Strip, which makes sense, sure. But the areas surrounding the city, the suburbs, the factories, and the many, many plazas, all feel a little bit, I don't know, forgotten? Maybe that's unfair, and I'm sure Ventura's fans will let me know in the comments below. I mean, we go to the suburbs in that one tenpenny mission, and Millie lives out there. We go to a big factory during the casino heist, but for one thing, the casino heist is entirely optional, and I used to skip it quite often when playing, but for some reason, that never felt like enough for me. Perhaps it's because I was originally the most interested in visiting Ventura's of the three, and it comparatively gets the least amount of attention. Maybe that's why I've always been so disappointed by it. I mean, the only mission givers in the city who aren't on the Strip are from Crash, as far as I remember, and you spend a lot less time in the city versus Fierro and especially Los Santos. And doubly especially, shut up, if you decide to skip the casino stuff. It also annoys me that most of the player homes in Venturas are just suites that you can buy inside the many casinos. I get it, I do. The focus of a Vegas-based city was always going to be the Strip, and we do get to spend lots and lots of time there, but it doesn't always seem like we get to spend a lot of time in the other parts of the city, certainly not in comparison. This whole trend feels true of the entire third or penultimate act of the game. The desert sections in Tierra Robada and Bone County always felt a bit more tacked on than the countryside arc pre-San Fierro, and most of what you end up doing is just a bunch of flying, and subsequent crashing into invisible things. I love the aesthetic of Vegas, and therefore of Venturas. This strip might be one of my favorite parts of the San Andreas map, but the rest of the city just feels like it needed a little bit more time in the oven, or a few more mission givers spread around a little bit more. There is a girlfriend in Millie that you meet through 
um, less than ideal circumstances during the casino heist, not exactly the best foundation for a relationship, and there's obviously plenty of fun to be had on the strip itself, but then you leave it and it's like, huh, what else is there to do here? That statement might come back to haunt me when we get to my favorite, but oh well, this is my list, gosh darn it, deal with it. And my second least favorite city in the 3D era is, also from San Andreas, the original version of Los Santos. Okay, maybe that caveat was unnecessary, seeing as we haven't gotten to the HD era quite yet, but I digress, as usual. Now get ready to hear me say this a lot when talking about the San Andreas cities, but similar to Ventura's, though not quite as bad, Los Santos does feel a little bit underdeveloped, as does Fierro, next to Liberty City and Vice City, which each had two respective games to flesh them out. Now, I do enjoy Los Santos plenty, but 3D era Los Santos has a whole bunch of attention to detail and love put into the gang territories and generally the east side of the map, while the west side feels a whole lot more forgotten, much like all of Ventura's. Now, the story reasons for this are completely logical, there are only so many occasions when the members of various gangs find it necessary to spend time on the west side of the city, but comparing San Andreas' cities once again to LC and VC, because we only spend about a third of the game in each, roughly speaking, we don't get to have missions that take us all across and to practically every nook and cranny like with those other cities. Though, once again, they do get the added benefit of having two games to explore them instead of just one. I always really enjoy my time spent in Los Santos during San Andreas' first and definitely best act, but you never spend much time out near downtown, the northern hills, or even the majority of Vagos territory on the far east side. You spend the vast majority of your time in and around Grove and Bala's gang territory in the eastern parts of the city, and then before you know it, you're on to the countryside sections and are discouraged by the game itself from revisiting until the story pushes you in that direction. None of the cities in San Andreas are, for understandable reasons, nearly as big as either Vice or Liberty City, but they are, I'd estimate, about two-thirds the size, but with significantly less detail. Don't misunderstand. They are still plenty detailed, but in comparison to other cities, they have a lot more sections which were never used for much of anything, which is, above all else, just really disappointing. I'm sure plenty of, probably almost exclusively Brazilian modders, have made plenty of modded stories which do attempt to fully utilize the cities to their full potentials, but the actual game does not. It's a real shame, too, because clearly lots of work went into the areas of Los Santos that you spend time in, but the game could only be so long, and San Andreas is, in my opinion, already a bit too long and disjointed at times in terms of its plot structure. I love San Andreas, and I love Los Santos, but I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I do think the game might have been overall better if it had committed to San Andreas being one mega city based on San Fran, like in GTA 1, or maybe just LA, like in GTA 5. Instead, we get slightly watered down locations with a whole hell of a lot of empty space. The video game equivalent to filler anime episodes, padding, and San Andreas has a lot of it, oh boy. But my favorite city of San Andreas might just highlight my hypocrisy since it's, well, San Fierro. I mean, most of you probably figured that out already by process of elimination, but yeah, it is. I can't fully understand or explain why. I just love the layout and compact design of Fierro. It's easily the smallest of the cities in the game, but it's just jam-packed with so many unique locations and interesting set pieces. It also has plenty of completely unused areas, like the whole section in the south near the long-ass freeway and the majority of the city's western half, but I think because of its relatively small size next to Ventura's or Los Santos, it always felt like it had less filler and was used more efficiently in terms of its mission spread. 
I feel like of all the cities in San Andreas, San Fierro I am the most familiar with from top to bottom, left to right. There are still plenty of sections of Los Santos and especially Venturas that I completely forget exist because the game never gives you good reason to visit them, but that doesn't feel like it was the case for San Fierro, with the exception of that big southern building complex. What is this place anyway? Hold on. Foster Valley. Oh, right. Yeah. This whole area might be the GTA Universe's version of Silicon Valley. Maybe. And the building complex here is apparently based on the Oracle Corporation's former headquarters in Redwood City. But sh I gotta stop here. We're getting dangerously close to an episode of GTA Geographies. Now, maybe my love for San Fierro comes down to my particular playstyle, or just my personality. I mean, of course it does, but I don't really care or feel too much of a need to justify my decision here. I just adore the feel of Fierro. It's quaint and just, I don't know, cozy. For a city, anyways. I love the whole boardwalk along the northern edge, the big-ass Palisades Park, the wonderful gayness of Hashbury, and the general presence of so many hippies and queer folk. I just love this city. Three separate bridges for a great skyline, the coolest looking of the game's three airports, the windy, windy, windy road, that big pointy building, I just love it all. And it's here that my hypocrisy and lack of actual objectivity is laid bare because I am well aware that San Fierro does still suffer from the majority of problems that I associated with Los Santos and Venturas. Having plenty of sections that just get criminally <laughs> underutilized, but I feel as though it's ever so slightly less of an issue here because the city is ever so slightly smaller and your stay in the city feels just long enough to get your fill. I also tend to come back to Fierro a lot more during the mid-game because of Carl's Garage and the extra garage side missions, whereas Venturas felt like a vacation and it becomes literally dangerous in the story for Carl to return to after pissing off all the Mafia families running it, and you're strongly discouraged from spending much time in Los Santos until after you beat the main story. And as much as I'm sure I'm in the minority here, maybe, I don't tend to do a whole lot after I beat the game. Instead, trying to complete most things that I intend to do before reaching the game's final, lackluster act of a bunch of recycled gang warfare mechanics. But it's finally time to move on to a different game with Vice City, where it all started for me more than two decades ago. This was my first GTA City love affair, and although Miami isn't nearly as famous as New York, the aesthetic of Vice City is probably my favorite in the series. And I know what you're thinking, but there's still one more to go. I know, I know, just shut up, okay? It's my channel, and I never said I was following any hard and fast rules. Rules are for squares, okay? So allow me to explain. I adore the visual style of Vice City, and therefore, by extension, the real world Miami. I love the beaches, the sunny skylines, the islands in between islands in between more islands, the miles and miles of coastline, and all that deadly water, well, for Italians anyway, but we'll get to why Liberty City beats it as my favorite actual city when we get to it. Settle down. Yeah, you in the back, calm the hell down. Vice City is just so pretty to look at, pretty much all of it with the exception of some of the more industrial sections on the mainland island's western half, but practically everything else is just oozing with character and, for me, nostalgia. Ocean Beach and, to a lesser extent, Washington Beach are among my favorite neighborhoods in any GTA game, even if they do have huge sections of completely redundant beach that is effectively just padding so the developers could say the city was larger than Liberty City, technically speaking. The actual urban parts of Vice City are far less dense than anything we get in almost any other city, and I think that goes a long way in making more of the city itself memorable. There are fewer locations that just get forgotten about, and like I said earlier, since Vice gets to be visited twice, once in 1984 and once in 1986, we get to see a lot of different parts of it, 
especially in Vice City Stories, because of the game's empire-building mechanic, which sees you spending time in places you otherwise wouldn't, if you're going for a big empire, that is, which you always should. The original VC, set in 86, does have a lot more of that San Andreas problem, having large areas that are completely neglected, like most of the space around the airport, and a decent chunk of the Eastern Island's middle section, but thanks to the magic of Vice City Stories, my simultaneous favorite and least favorite entry in the 3D era, most of the unused areas get a second wind, like the military base, that industrial area where the Mendez brothers dump Vic and Lance, the airport when defending Gonzalez or picking up Lance, downtown when working for Umberto or saving Louise from Martinez. In fact, now that I think about it, it kind of feels like the starting island from the first game, consisting of Ocean Beach, Washington Beach, and Vice Point, gets more focus in that game, while the apparent mainland, which becomes the starting point in VCS, gets the attention it lacked when you play the sequel prequel. There are so many memorable landmarks in VC, probably the most out of any of the 3D era cities for me, but my biggest criticisms, and a big part of what prevents it from taking the 3D crown, is the relatively sparse road network and abundance of neglected alleys, especially in downtown. There's also the fact that the original VC tries to make up for the actual city's smaller size with more of a focus on boats, but the fact that you can't swim strongly discourages you from actually doing much of anything with the boats. And also, boats are just never as fun. I can't think of a game that actually managed to make me like boats enough to justify purchasing better ones. Maybe the Scarface video game a bit, which is also set in Miami, real Miami though, but even then, I still don't remember caring much about the boats. I like the visuals that all the waterways and boats bring to VC, but I don't actually care about the boats themselves, which does take a big chunk of enjoyment away from me. But now, we finally arrive at my favorite city in the 3D era, Liberty City. Now, I think a huge part of why it is ultimately my favorite is down to the fact that I spent an absurd amount of time in it while filming for Season 1 of GTA Geographies, which you should go watch if you haven't seen yet. As of the writing of this video, I have been toying once again with the idea of finally picking up GTA Geographies Season 2 because I would like to actually make those videos, but they never got the views I needed them to get for the effort they took before, so I'm still reluctant. Perhaps by the time you see this video, I'll have already released GTA Geographies Season 2, Episode 2, because I've literally done all the work for it and just need to edit it, but it remains to be seen if I'm going to or not. So, if I didn't and you feel teased by this revelation, I don't know what to tell you. Sign up on my Patreon and pester me over there to release them, that's going to be your best bet. Anyways, getting distracted again. I am very familiar with every single part of 3D era Liberty City. Every neighborhood, nearly every block, and I can navigate the whole thing without a map. Which is good because GTA 3 doesn't even have an in-game one, asking you to instead use a physical one, and as old school as I am, that was never actually practical whatsoever. But I do just generally love the vibes of 3D era Liberty City. It's easily the city in the 3D universe that I want to spend the least amount of time in, if it were real, but in the context of the games, whenever you're there, you're playing as some of the series' most psychotic individuals, those being Claude and Tony, and they fit into the craziness of the city just perfectly. Portland especially is so damn nostalgic for me. I just love practically every square inch of it. Staunton Island is great too, don't get me wrong, but it is a little bit more frustrating to navigate, with the giant causeway cutting it in half, and a fairly large section of it just being one giant set piece, the Panlantic construction site of Fort Staunton, at least in GTA 3. But this brings me to one of the coolest parts about Liberty City, the fact that we get to see it change dramatically between the two games that it features in. If you've never played Liberty City Stories, in that game, the Panlantic construction site is an actual neighborhood, the 3D era's equivalent to Manhattan's Little Italy. In fact, 
lots of Liberty City changes from LCS to 3, which are set three years apart. Maybe too much, in fact, to make sense, but I couldn't care less. The doll's house is destroyed, and in 3 it's just an empty lot, I think. The projects in Hepburn Heights are still under construction. The Panlantic site is replaced by the actual neighborhood of Fort Staunton. And then there's the mainland, Shoreside Vale. Oh, crap. Yeah, we do got to talk about Shoreside Vale. Now, if I was trying to, like, objectively rank these cities, Shoreside would dramatically bring the whole of LC down, since it is very dramatically underutilized and sort of exemplifies the problem that I mentioned that all the San Andreas cities have of being very empty and kind of forgotten. Hell, the airport is hardly used for much of anything in GTA 3, and you literally only start one mission there, the final mission, if you don't count any of the side activities. You do visit it a couple of times for other missions, but not for very long, and that's probably for the best because most of all, the road layout of Shoreside Vale is beyond frustrating. It can be an absolute nightmare to navigate it, especially in LCS, which does have a few more missions on the third island compared to three. All of that negativity, to a more sane person, might have pushed LC to the slot below VC, but I don't know. I just adore navigating 3D LC a little bit more than VC. If and when, for whatever reason, I get a bug up my ass to just jump into one of the games and start randomly doing taxi missions while listening to some music say, it's almost always Liberty City, and usually Portland specifically. There's just something about its worn on the sleeve misery as the worst place in America that just gets me, you know? No? Ah, screw you then. So that's it for the 3D era, but next week, uh, probably, I'll take a look at the HD eras, towns, and cities, and give them the same treatment. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe and hit the bell icon and all that fancy jazz. But if you really want to help me out in continuing to make these videos, consider signing up at my Patreon with the link in the description down below. I'm the Criminal Historian, and I'll see you next time. Have yourself a wonderful evening.